Hey everybody, it's your boy Nerdicane doing a voiceover video today. This one's going to be a little bit more about the culture and the world we live in of comic books right now. Um, as some of you know me, I used to, and I think I've said this before, I used to sell cars. And it's a very interesting job. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. I had a bit of success. Um, it's hard to do. It's hard to get really successful in it. Um, generally, people treat the car salesman like absolute garbage. But I guess we've kind of deserved it because I worked with a couple of the old guys, with one of the really old guys, and some of the stuff that car salesmen were doing back then, yeah, it was super shady. But anyway, getting back to comics and car sales and just a sales job in general. When you sell cars, you have to commit to the bit. You have to, if you're selling Fords, you have to like Fords. If you're selling Chevy, you have to like Chevy. If you're selling Audis, you have to like Audis. You have to commit to the bit, push the brand 100% in almost everything you do. And that's what they tell us. Social media is one of the strongest things. You can't afford to do a commercial, a TV commercial for yourself. So what you have to do is you have to use your social media as your own promotion, as your own commercial, and push it that way. And bear with me, this is going to get to comics. Uh, you have to sell yourself, and you have to sell the product. And that's where we're getting to in comics. I was actually looking around at a lot of the pros, and I wanted to see, I wanted to take their measure on that scale. Who's in it to win it? Who's committed to the bit? Who is pushing comics? Because as we've said for a long time, and even pros on the other side have said, comics are struggling. Comics are a dying media. And we're trying to push it, but there's a lot of toxicity right now with a lot of creators wanting to push half of the population of America away from comics and turn it into a very small club. So, you know, I wanted to go through kind of a, a, a good and bad. And you guys are free to go look at the Twitter, look at the social media of these people to, to check me on this one, because I'm going to give you the bad first. So... Dan Slott, the major writer on Spider-Man, he just wrote a great book, uh, absolutely outstanding Spider-Man 800. Here's the thing, half of the people in America can't tell him because everybody is blocked. I'm blocked by him. Um, other people who have me blocked, well, Mark Wade. Mark Wade doesn't have me blocked. Mark Wade is just so toxic on Twitter and uh, has made himself somewhat liable on Twitter that he's got a, he's had to nuke his entire social media and go into hiding in a bunker. Um, so if he were on and he did have me blocked before, which I don't like his work. I think he's toxic. I don't care. Uh, Tamar Bond Valane has me blocked. I don't care. I don't think she's really significant enough in the industry for me to care. Um, Mariko Tamaki has me now, mind you all four of these people I've never interacted with on social media ever, but they've used the block bots, so I'm blocked out. Uh, Mariko Tamaki, honestly, Mariko, I don't care. Uh, I don't think your work is redeemable. I don't think you can write a good comic book. So I imagine one way or another in the next couple months, years, you'll be out of comic books, so I don't care. Um, people who are just bad at social media, they don't understand what to do with it and how to push themselves and the media of comic books. <clears throat> Sorry. Here's something, you know, uh, Captain Cummings put out a video this morning about Francesca Ramsey coming to Marvel Comics being hired. Now that was a false flag. Uh, and it caused a lot of, a bit of a stir on social media, but you know, in, in researching that and seeing if it was true and seeing who this person was, Yes, she's a race baiter. She's made her entire career promoting the differences and sort of the strife and animosity between the races, the genders, the classes, things like that. Um, but here's what she does do. And if she were hired at Marvel, uh, which I don't think she should ever be, she is a relentless promoter of her books, her talking, Anything that she is, she's in has to do. She is an absolutely relentless promoter of that. And that is what 
a lot of people in the comics industry and a lot of people at Marvel could take from this. So getting back to the bad, um, Kelly Sue DeConnick, who is notoriously bad for saying, if you don't like my politics, don't buy, don't buy my books. Well, here's the last numbers I could find for Bitch Planet. So people aren't buying your book. Considering you had a big nationwide release and you had a lot of the comic book press glad-handing you, maybe you should reconsider that. And, and maybe you should reconsider promoting yourself, promoting the books, promoting comics. If you really want to be in comics... Let's get a little action going. It commit to the bit if you want to be a comic book writer. Um, here is one from G. Willow Wilson, who there's honestly there's not a whole lot about comic books on her page. Um, here's a tweet that someone else retweeted about someone should bring a Turkish Ramadan show to America. Yeah, that's ratings gold. Yeah, jump right on that major networks or Netflix. Uh, Rainbow Rowell, who also another writer who is absolutely irredeemable. I think she'll be out of comics very soon. You know, just going through the first couple, uh, probably first two or three dozen posts, you see posts about guns, uh, about fried pickles, about Mick Jagger. You don't see a whole lot about her book on the Runaways, or her work on the Runaways. Um, and I can see why, because her work on the Runaways is terrible. So she's not in it to win it. She's not part of this comic book community. She's not focused and looking to get ahead. Um, and this takes me to Mags. Uh, you know, I'm going to read Mags' new book coming out about Dazzler. But if you go through the Twitter profile of Mags, you'll see things about um, Pride Week. You'll see old pictures of Brian Visaggio. Uh, you'll see tweets about Trump, Roseanne, and your best summer vagina. Uh, but what you don't see is you don't see a whole lot of promotion of Mags' work. Mags, you have a book coming out in, what, four days? A major book at a major publisher, Marvel, of a very beloved character. Are you proud of this work? You wrote it months ago. Are you proud of this work? Do some promotion. Push it. See if you can get sales above 5,000, which you're pretty much known for sub-5,000. You know, and here's all, we're going to go to the other end of the spectrum. Um, the good guys. Matthew Rosenberg, as much as his writing is up and down, uh, I'm definitely not looking forward to his multiple man run just based on the pictures of the promotion. Oh my God, it looks terrible. But... You know, for as weird and schizophrenic and up and down as his writing can be, he's pushing it. He's he's in the game. He's in it to win it. Um, Chip Zdarsky, as up and down as he's been, he's actually writing a very good uh, Marvel 2-in-1 series, which he just finished up. It's very good. Um, he's in it to win it. He's pushing comics. He's saying, here, this is my comic. This is what I'm working on. This is what friends of mine are working on. Buy this comic. Uh, Declan Shelby. Excellent guy on Twitter. Excellent promoter. He wants to be in comics. Uh, a newcomer, Jim McCann. Everything on his Twitter is about comics. Um, he wants you buying his book. He wants you buying his book so much that he bothered to write a good book. Um, I read his Infinity, uh, Captain Marvel. Oh my God, it's the best Captain Marvel book I've read in a very, very long time. Um... Jim McCann is committed to the bit. He wants more work at Marvel. He deserves more work at Marvel. He needs more work. Um, at the DC side, you know, I don't really think I've seen too many pros at DC. I think DC has a better social media policy for their professionals. Um, Tom King, Mitch Garads, awesome online. They are great interacting with all fans. Um, they want you buying their books. They want you buying the books of their friends of their other pros. They push all the time. And the absolute king of wanting you to go out and buy comics, Peter Samedi. Uh, he is the EIC at Alterna Comics. I love Alterna Comics. Alterna Comics is like the craft beer of comics. Um, they're very short runs, creator-driven, usually completely done by the creator and the writer. Alternate comics are excellent. You guys should be buying alternate comics. You figure out a way to buy it. Um, and, you know, getting back to sales, 
the sales job. There's a sales job being done by Diversity Comics and Ethan Metzgiver. You know, as I learned, as my manager would always say, sales comes down to three things. Find the people, tell them your story, ask them to buy. And Zach and Ethan have found the people. They have cultivated the audience. They have told their stories, um, Cyberfrog and Jawbreakers, and now they're asking their audience to buy. And guess what? Because they did those three things, it has blossomed. They have cultivated the audience. They showed the product. The buyers trust them. And then they asked them to buy. And now Jawbreakers has just gone past uh, a third of a million dollars. Ethan's project, Cyberfrog, is blowing up. Now that I do this video, I remember uh, i got to place my order for Cyberfrog coming up soon. And it's a sales job. They want you to buy their product. So I'm going to wrap this up uh, in a nice little bow. And I'm challenging you, you know, the, the comic readers, the people who want to be into comic books. Look around Twitter. Look around social media. Um, when somebody, you know, if you like a creator, look at their social media. Look what they're talking about. Look what they're interested in. Find out if you should support them, if they're committed to the bit, if they're in it to win it. Um, the answers might be. Actually, you know what? The answers probably won't surprise you because if you're following a real professional, a real comic book pro, instead of somebody who's just getting a, like, a little shot, a little flash in the industry, um, you'll see. You'll be able to tell the difference. And, you know, years from now, we'll probably look back at, I'll probably look back at this video and say, okay, yeah, this person was just a flash in the pan. They had their little run. They had their little fun, picked up some paychecks. Um, Rainbow Rowell, I'm looking at you. Yeah, um, they picked up their paychecks, and then they went on to do other things. They went on to write more YA novels. They went on to whatever. I'm not even sure whatever what type of writing that would qualify you for. But just look around, and um, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks for watching. My name's Nerdicane. You can catch me here. You can catch me on Twitter. If you like this, hit a like and a subscribe. And um, yeah, just take a, take a minute to look around social media and see who's uh interested in comics who are which pros are actually interested in comics and i think it'll be a very telling thing for you to see but thanks for listening have a good day and i should have another video out today bye